Good afternoon, everybody. Or actually, good evening. Hi, we're on now. You want to the test the, the sound on? We're good. You can hear me? There you go. Now you can hear me? All right. Thank you, everybody, for, for, um, for showing up, <laughs> for helping out and participating. Um, my name is Miguel Martinez, and this is the Blasting Advisory Board from Miami Lakes. Tonight, we want to go over some background information, um, demystify of what is going on. And as far as the science, you'll be able to, to recognize and see the damages that are happening to our homes. Um, the intent is not to close the mining operations down. The intent is always to coexist. They provide a necessary uh, material. We need it if we enjoy our homes, our roads to drive on, and, and the like. So just to be clear, we're not shutting anybody down, and there is no intent for doing so. It is a matter of coexisting. With that, it's a matter of pre preventing a, um, further damages to our properties. We recognize that there are damages and there are occurring, and, and, and we recognize where the source is coming from. So we need to, to uh, coexist and find an equitable means to do so. so um, with that, uh, we'll start with, hopefully you could see the slides that may be a little bit small on these monitors. Maybe. <laughs> All right. I think we're gonna have to, um, if you could do it manually. All right, so just to give you a brief background, how I started uh, engaging this. I have a degree in architecture and I've designed many buildings, many projects and whatnot. The method in which we design, it's basically putting up pieces of a puzzle together to find a solution. And I took that mindset into this matter. So when I initially started investigating this, I arbitrarily drew us a radius, a four mile radius around the mine that's closest to our area and affecting my home. That, that radius is four miles, that circle that you're seeing. And I gave it to a realtor friend of mine to, give, to quantify how many houses and properties, residents, if you will, in that circle. And it was over 40,000 homes at that time within that circle. As, as I began giving presentations, I've learned that the effects are being felt 11 miles away. If we increase the radius to 11 miles, it's over 400,000 homes. And that includes homes. That doesn't include businesses, the commercial properties, municipal infrastructure, roadways, and, and the like. Oh, hit next, please. Now, we'll use White Rock since this is affecting our area here. In reality is, as we extend the, the reach of the mining operations throughout Dade County, it affects a, lot, a larger, greater number of homes. But this is the reference that is affecting our area. So in White Rock, you're going to notice, uh, you may see it on, on the turnpike in I-75, a large crane. A lar it's a blue crane. That's called the drag line. And what that does is drops a bucket into the, that pit. The water body you see is a pit, um, and that's what scoops up the broken rock. What they do is drill holes 85 feet down into the earth and fill it with explosives. The explosives are then detonated, and then the rock falls into that pit, where again it's scooped up and piled into piles where large earth movers 
pick up those rocks and take it to get to the processing plant. Yeah, next, please. So there's a region called the Lake Belt. Now, the Lake Belt was developed and assigned back in the late 70s. And at that time, it was considered the furthest west most uh, out of development areas within Dade County. And it's basically running parallel on the west side of, of the turnpike. So if you drive down a turnpike, you will see beautiful bodies of water. Those were mines that have already been completed. And next, please. Now, a number of years ago, a couple of years ago, the state of Florida um, put an RFP out for a, a study to, to see the, the uh, of basically consider what has been going on. Respec, an engineering firm by the name of Respec, was awarded that contract, and they obtained the data that of the complaints and, and uh, of the information that's happening. Although there's a lot of things in that report that I will contest. One of the things that's in there is this map, and they identify the strata, the different stratas within the state. You'll notice that we're in the purple area. What's significant of that is that this is the Biscayne Aquifer. We are standing on water. We're, we're, um, hopefully we're all aware that the Biscayne Aquifer flows underneath us and is the source of our drinking water. The, the aquifer is also home of the lime rock, what they're excavating. So the lime rock acts as a filtration device for this water. And next, please. Now, if those out of us that stayed awake in physics back in the day, um, I know not, not many of us did, but, but nonetheless, the energy wave studied in physics has several properties. These key properties is amplitude, wavelength, the crest, the trough, and whatnot. You'll notice the purple arrow on the top, which is the direction of the travel. That is what the state is regulating in peak particle velocity, PPV, and it's in the units of inches per second. So it's the speed that this energy wave travels in a direction. It does not take and constitute wavelength or vibration or anything of the other properties with the wavelength. Next, please. Now, what we've discovered is that the, the energy being produced by a blast consists of these four um, energy types. So we have a love wave, a Raleigh wave, an S wave, and a P wave, or an R wave, I'm sorry. Each one are specific to the energy that it produces. Next, please. Now, my studies continued with taking a typical home in Miami Lakes. The, the, li the vertical lines on either side is basically the pop property boundaries. So you're looking at a 75 foot or a, it's a 100 foot typical width of a, of a Miami Lakes uh, home, residential home. Next. And if we superimpose a wavelength on it, a single wavelength, we've measured it to be three kilometers long. At three kilometers, that is how many homes it is affected within a single wavelength. Now you'll notice that the wavelength will go under the homes or over the homes, or may clear the homes altogether from below or clear the homes altogether from above. We, have, we hear conversations all the time of neighbors that they're, they're saying that their neighbors state that they don't feel anything or nothing happened or they don't have damage, they don't this, no that. Or vice versa where they'll say, well, how can you not feel it? My God, this is horrible, this, that, and this. And the reason is, is the following. You could see the energy hitting the home from below or you could see the energy wave hitting the home from above or skipping it all together. So that is a reality. They're not, neither parties are crazy, quote unquote. Next, please. Now, when we superimpose the energy waves that we just showed, it creates a, a, a payload on this energy wave traveling. That payload increases the swath of area of doing damage. So th again, this is just graphical and representational of, of, of how this payload uh, interacts with our homes. Next, please. Now, remember, <clears throat> the state of Florida is monitoring PPV velocity, which is direction of the travel, that red arrow. It does not take into constitute anything else that we've talked about. Next, please. We've also discovered, along with the energy wave, seismic energy wave, that an air pressure is being uh, created. This air pressure, by when the explosive explosion happens, and you can imagine, if you look, remember back in, in the old movies of, of uh, the atomic bomb, per se, when you have an air pressure going through the surface of the earth and hitting anything that's in its path, Similarly, the air pressure that's exerted by the explosion travels across the earth and it hits the, our, our structures. This explosion, it, it actually swells our homes. We've measured it to half a centimeter of swelling. So when you have trusses, if you have cathedral ceilings, you have angled ceiling inside your home, those trusses move by half a centimeter. This is what causes drywall fractures. The drywall does not flex, it does not move. So the joints will crack. And next, please. 
Now, again, we have four energy types. So we need to keep this in mind. Uh, each specific energy type is designed in a specific manner. It's designed to break the rock. But each, each uh, energy type has a specific movement. Next, please. Now, this is a video from a homeowner that sent me a, a security camera of his front door uh, camera. He came home from work one day to discover his tiles were all broken. He figured it was vandalism from some kids in the neighborhood. So he checked the security camera. When he advised me, we superimposed <laughs> the date of the, of the camera you could see on the top to, to a, a blast and it coincided. If you watch closely from the bottom right corner of, of that porch, watch the tiles as the energy travels through the porch. If you could put it on, on uh, continuous, please. Okay, do you see the tiles popping? All right, that is called debonding. And debonding, when you have um, different materials, every, every material has its own natural frequency of vibration. If we introduce an additional vibration, the vibration will excite the material. And in, in these cases, we'll separate the materials. And that's what we're witnessing. So we have a lot of complaints where tiles are popping and they don't know why. Well, this is why. Next, please. <clears throat> so the, the effects of, of the energy wave, what's imperative to understand is the response to structure. It is known. The responses are known. How the structure responds is what varies. Now, this is an example taken from a federal study and it shows the sliding, racking, and overturning moments of a structure. And this is what, uh, on, a, on a wooden structure, that's being affected by a seismic energy wave. Again, in wood, it absorbs energy. It, it, it'll move, it take, has some flexure. The Florida Building Code for our area is rigid construction. We have masonry, so we do not move. We're designed to withstand the forces of a hurricane wind. Next, please. So this is where things are getting interesting. When we can apply actual recorded energy wave and put in a computer model to what the effects on a reinforced masonry, we begin to see the stresses and the fractures that are happening. In this image, you'll see starting from the bottom corner in the center of the page of the screen, where it's the solid purple, that is your floor slab. So this is basically looking at your house from the exterior. You'll see each column, the vertical elements, those are your, what's called tie columns. Those are filled cells of concrete with a rebar that act as to reinforce your wall. You'll see your openings and how it highlights each area. It's hard to see in this image, but you'll see it better in the next. In the ceiling, the flexure that happens, the trusses act as a diaphragm to reinforce the two sides of the walls. They're being flexed and stressed. Now, the vertical elements is being stressed, but they're designed to do so because they take the, the uh, perpendicular forces from a wind, but it is not designed for seismic loading. Next, please. So this is a dynamic computer model. If you hit next, so it can play. And you'll see that as the stress is applied to the structure and they travel through the structure, you will see that the openings are being torsioned. The torsioning means that the, the, the corners of these openings, bottom right, as an example, if you start again, starting from the center of this house or the center of the screen, I'm sorry, that first window, you could see the bottom right corner is, is opening, so it's becoming obtuse. It's no longer 90 degrees. The left corner is acute. Concrete takes compression. It does not take expansion. So in compression, an acute angle, it works. In obtuse, that right corner, it cracks. So what we're finding is that a diagonal crack will form on the same corner of a window or of an opening on each side of the house. That is common to seismic damage. The all, also, the flexure, as we saw in the previous slide, from the floor slab to the wall, it's pivoting at that, that connection. So we're gonna find a hairline crack at the floor, at the, at the height of the floor slab of the house. This is typical of seismic damage. This is not poor construction as being claimed. Next, please. Now this home is two years old at the time of the photograph. You could see the hairline crack denoted by the arrows from the corner at the height of the slab, the floor slab. Next, please. This house is 30 years old. You could see that same crack at the floor slab, but now you're also witnessing the step cracking. You're also seeing water intrusion into the, the wall. Now, 
if we're familiar with construction at the corner of an open, a corner of a house, I'm sorry, is reinforced masonry. That means there's a rebar there. And if, by the staining of that wall, that means water's intruding on it. So and if we enter, if water enters into a structure and gets to the rebar, we know what happens uh, like on the beach when you have rusting and spalling. So we're, we're, we're uh, reducing the structural integrity of this, this dwelling. Next, please. Similarly, the right corner, again, as we showed, you have a diagonal crack that is starting to form. It's very faint. But if you look closely where the arrows are, you could see the crack only happens on the right corner of this wall. Next, please. This building is 13 years old at the time of the photograph. And again, you'll, you see at the bottom the, the crack along the floor slab. You also see the step cracks uh, along the corner of the building, which is typical of that, the, the waves that we showed previously. On the right photograph, you see the components of the wall, and they're all being stressed and damaged. You could literally make out the, the, the line of the blocks uh, and along and the columns vertically. Next, please. This is the roof of that same building. So we're three stories up. That's the stair tower. And as the movement increases, the sway of the building, you could see that each block, individual block, is, is now defined. You could see the tie beam. Um, each, each element of the wall is being shown in, uh, with damage and cracks. And again, this is obviously through, through stucco. So it's not just the block behind, it's, it's cracking the stucco as well. Next, please. These homes uh, are designed with a front porch, two column front porch. You'll notice that on the top picture that the front porch is actually leaning down. Okay, the, the homeowners have repaired the tiles and it, it's, it's many times people are alluded that the roof tile provides your waterproofing and your water protection. It does not. Your sheathing, the, the underlayment of that tile is what protects the, the, from water. So they've had contractors come and repair the roof. You can see by the new tiles there as if that will repair and, and uh, restore the waterproofing. It does not. On the bottom uh, uh, house, you'll see the connection between the beam and the column, a diagonal crack. Well, what's happening here, there's a phenomenon called liquefaction. We're going to get into that. A liquefaction, anything that's on the surface of, of the, the soil, will actually uh, settle irrationally, we'll put it. Anything that's below the surface will, will lift out of the ground. This is in um, liquefaction is energy introduced to water saturated soils. It's how it affects it. The, the bottom picture, that, that crack that you see, it has to match on, the, on another side of the, the structure. So where the connection is of the porch roof to the house roof, match that crack. And obviously that location is not conducive to water, um, non-water penetration. And water came into the house and damaged the house interior. Next, please. Similarly, an older home, you could see the same damage again. So we're looking at similar damages at different ages. It's irrelevant to the age of the home. The damage affects it all. Further, as the, and the, the, what's representative of this of the age of the home is it's not built under different Florida building codes because the building code has evolved. It's the same damage, however. Next, please. Now we get into liquefaction. In liquefaction, again, things that are on top of the soil will settle and move um, without regard. You'll notice that this is a single post holding this gate up. It is claimed of poor construction. That is the simple blame that they always placed on it. However, the load on this column, the only load it has is the load of the gate. So if this in true was in poor construction, that column would be leaning towards the gate. It's pulling it down. It's leaning in the opposite direction. So that's showing you liquefaction. Next, please. In, in the rear of the house, we get this and hear this a lot. The swimming pools are leaking, pool decks are sinking and settling, and it's not what, that's not is, that is not what is happening. What is happening is the pool is lifting out of the ground. Many times the pool uh, pulls the deck with it. As you can see by the photograph on the bottom, that the right side, the pool deck has lifted. The pool deck on the left of the crack has actually stayed in its own original place. These are showing uh, signs of the liquefaction, and it's easily seen by the water level. What you want to do is look at the water level of the pool itself. Water will always find its own level, and you will see that one side of the pool is higher than the other by the level of the water to the pool deck or the coping. Next, please. 
The other problem that that is affecting us that many people say, well, why'd you move to the area? Well, guess what? All property owners are paying taxes. The taxes are paying for infrastructure and our infrastructure, our sewer lines, water lines, everything that's in the street, the street itself, it's all being affected. The top left picture, you could see the manhole is lifting out of the ground. Manhole and, and sewer drains are, are um, they're, they're at a level where the water will flow from one location to another. That's how the water drains out a sewer system. It's a passive system. It doesn't have a mechanical pump. Well, if we change the level, the elevation of these things, as you're seeing, it's raising. We, the, the, the system is no longer level and the streets flood. This area floods within 10 minutes of a simple rainfall. Next slide, please. Now we're getting into the, the gritty stuff. <laughs> if we don't recognize this photo by now, this is Surfside. It, a report will be coming out soon of showing how the Surfside collapsed. Not why, but how. And the issue of the introduction of energy wave to the building, and, and in Surfside case, it was the adjacent building pile driving. Pile driving produces 40,000 pounds of force downward, and that downward force to the pile produces 10,000 uh, pounds laterally to the side. What does that uh, affect? In debonding, we all seen uh, sites of demolition when they knock a building down using a jackhammer, and you'll see a pile of rebar. Well, they use a jackhammer to break the concrete, and what remains is the rebar. What happens? The actual rebar is debonded from the concrete. So we're no longer acting as reinforced concrete, which is concrete and steel. We're acting as two components, steel and concrete separately. So you'll notice where the circle is. That column that we're looking at, the brown part is the second floor of a parking, parking deck. The white area with a number is the parking space, was the ground floor of a parking deck. It's called punching shear, where the slab slides down the column. The column punctures the slab. And the rebar, as you can see in the photograph, is stripped from the slab. That is debonding. Next slide, please. Further in, the, in, the, in for the Champlain Tower Surfside, you could see on the top by the AC units, those lines is where the, the reinforcement has been stripped from the slab. You could see in the, in the picture on the right that the rebar is actually, and the reinforcement is, is hanging. It's been stripped from the slab. So it's called debonding. Next slide, please. Now, what does that mean to us? Shortly after Surfside, an apartment building off Miami Gardens in the area of, of the energy wave suffered a partial roof collapse. If, if we weren't recognize it, we should. Next slide. We're gonna notice, again, the left side is where the, 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 the decorative mansard it was not a structural component that collapsed. However, if you look at the right picture, it's a balcony. Balconies are concrete. Now the strongest connection in the balcony is the connection to the building because that's where it's taking the most force. But what takes the most movement, if any energy that goes through the structure is the end of the balcony. It's not a coincidence that the end of the balcony shows concrete has been spalled and broken. It does not take movement, it does not take flexure. The steel is exposed. Next slide, please. So in structures class, you could see that this is a the force diagram of a balcony. So on the left side is the, the, the penetration of the rebar in a building. And on the right side is the flexure of the force itself that represents on a balcony, force applied. You notice how much movement is there. That's not a coincidence that the balcony end is where the rebar and the, re the rebar is exposed, the concrete was broken. Next, please. The next property north of that apartment building is this wall. You can easily, as you could see, this image was taken off Google Earth. It's easily seen. And you'll witness the step cracking, the crack on the bottom, and at the, the back uh, portion where the arrow is, the, the, the beam, the concrete beam of that uh, privacy wall is also damaged. This is stereotypical of seismic damage. It, this is not poor construction. Next slide, please. Again, continuing with seismic damage. This is Spanish Lakes Elementary School. This is a high-end elementary school and the, one of the largest schools in the state for the count, student count. A teacher sent this in, these photographs, after a blast, and the glass balcony, the, the baluster of the glass bal of the balcony, I'm sorry, shattered, along with floor cracks. Now, our children are being exposed to this type of damage. Can you imagine being in school you're 10 years old and your balcony cracks in front of your eyes. 
how would you be shaken up and try attending class and pay attention thereafter? Next, please. This building is the, the old building for planning and zoning Hylia Gardens, for those that are not familiar with it. Again, this is an image off Google Earth. You could, you could uh, um, check it yourself and go back um, for last year and, and, and pass that um, because it has now been demolished, this building. You see where the arrows are, that those are step cracks. Next slide. Those step cracks, I took an engineer to see this building and we measured the cracks. We inserted a ruler into the crack to check the depth and we knocked on the drywall inside this, the office behind this wall. This building has now been demolished completely, considered to be unsafe. This is a government building, which should be at a, at a higher level of construction. Next slide, please. So what's happening now? Moving forward, the state, in response to all of our complaints and doing, and this is what's imperative for you guys to know, the state has engaged what's called the Miami-Dade Pilot Program. They have put an RFP out and retained the services of an engineering firm, an independent firm, and the independent firm has installed seismographs throughout the county. The seismographs are live and they're recording energy waves from the mining operations. You'll, if, you, if you look closely, you'll see yellow triangles. Those yellow triangles are the locations of the seismographs. They're all over the county. This is just a zoom in shot of our area. You'll also see blue circles. Those blue circles are complaints that have been filed. Now, we're gonna get into it later of filing a complaint, but we need, again, this is a beta uh, version of the website that will be live shortly. Um, and we're, they're populating it. They're populating with our complaints. So when you pick on a dot, a blue dot, pick on your home and whoever filed that complaint, it will link you dynamically to the location of the blast that, it, that made you file the complaint. It will then show you the, the, the blast information, the recording information that they're gathering along with the blast information that the, the miner provided. The, what's happening or what is to happen next is with that data is to be analyzed to, for proper legislation to, to be approved. So um, I guess moving forward, I know we, I'm trying to keep it quick for you guys, it's late um, and we wanna hear your, your testimony. So we would like if you guys can come up and, and provide your testimony, it's being recorded. If you have any photographs you wanna share, whatever you would like to say. If you could tell us your name and, and your general location. We're no, we don't actually seek your actual address, but your location so that we can monitor and, and show the extent of these damage that are, that are happening. Yeah, come on up. There's a mic. There we go. Good evening, my name is Nelson Rodriguez. My address is 8753. Northwest 162nd Terrace. Uh, most of you know who I am. I was the former vice mayor of the town um, and was elected in 2012 and been trying to get Tallahassee to open their mind to this process of what's going on here. Miguel, what you and the blasting committee, Dave Bennett, and everybody else has done throughout the years is incredible of the research. And, and we're so grateful for that. Unfortunately, it's going on deaf ears in Tallahassee. Many, many years ago, we met with the, the, um, the senator in charge of blasting for the state of Florida. And we were told that the biggest purchaser of this material is the state of Florida. So it goes on death ears, as you said, okay? But something has to happen. Um, I provided my photos to Gabby from CBS4, and I'll, I'll send you the photos. The miners came to my house. I filed a complaint. They brought in all kinds of, of um uh, laser beams and measuring devices that, that you know more about that than I do um, and measured my pool area. My pool is cracked. I, on average, I lose six to seven inches a week. Um, I've plastered it. I've done everything I can to the pool, had at least 10 contractors come in um, and nobody wants to come back. Everybody tells me I can't warranty it. I can't warranty it. I can't warranty it and walks away. You educated me tonight though. My pool is leaning and I do see it. I, I, I knew something wasn't right, but now that you educated me tonight um, about how my pool is leaning. So the, the, the deep part of my pool is coming out of the ground. Um, so, and the step cracks and all the cracks around the windows that I, I my house is a classic. 
Um, but I, I appreciate that. I appreciate you guys coming out and doing this. The, the, the problem is we need to get Tallahassee to respond. When they moved that uh, control from blasting out of Dade County to Tallahassee, it really tied the hands here in the county uh, to the point where they put a, a, um, a blasting meter in my home. The miners did after that. And it was there for two years. And I said, look, get it, get, get it out of here. Because it's an eyesore. It was right next to my pool. And all the blasts were under minimum, which is the excuse they're using. And I'll let somebody else talk about under minimums because you know about the blasting at 0.25. Um, so I've done all this research and, and, and participated in a lot of these meetings. But I truly appreciate what you guys have done. And, and, I, and I'll be there anytime you need um, to continue to fight this. But Unfortunately, un until Tallahassee opens their ears to this and sees what's happening to our homes, we're not going anywhere. Um, but if you have any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions about the damage to my home. Nelson, thank you for, for your comment. Your comment actually brings up an important point, which is what are we doing in Tallahassee to, to try to bring about a change? And that's ultimately the question that's on everyone's mind. When is change coming and how is change going to be achieved? We have always maintained the position that this is a marathon, not a sprint. Yes. We are going up against very large powers here with a lot of funds and with a lot of interest at play. But what I do want to highlight is that this BAB did go to Tallahassee uh, this yeah. January and we had a very successful run. One of the things, what was it? It was approximately uh, 30 to 40 individual meetings that we held with, with uh, elected officials, about 40. Um, and we were raiding the halls of, of, of uh, the state capitol, pulling uh, representatives and senators aside whenever we could uh, to get our voices heard. One of the things that struck me, and I know it struck Miguel, was the fact that this is an unknown issue. Like you said, deaf ears. Most people, once we presented statistics and images, such as the ones that you saw here tonight, they were in actual shock as to what they saw. So what, what we're hoping and what we believe will happen is when we return to Tallahassee and we will be back, uh, I know our, our town council has been supportive of that and we do hope to continue to have that support in the future is when we go back, now this is not a new story. Now this is, forget your shock and awe of learning about this, right. let's do something about right. it. So that's our, our hope going forward and, and that is part of this marathon. Step one was, hey, letting you know there's a problem. Now it's go back and say, hey, here's a solution. There's obviously, you know, you, you were an elected official at one point. You know how politics works. Yes, sir. Um, and there are political hurdles to go over yeah. to get this thing onto the, uh, the, the House floor. Uh, and, you know, we are working with our own elected officials to help make that a reality. Yeah. But nothing will help more than getting more and more complaints filed by the community, which is something we're going to go over at the very end. Once everyone uh, asks questions, makes their comments, right. we're going to go over how you make a complaint. That is going to be the lifeblood of showing Tallahassee, hey, if you don't do something about this, you're not going to keep your job. Right. And I, and 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 I'll I'll finish off with this. Um, I know that Tom Fabrizio, our state representative, uh, is here. Still here. Yep, still here. And that that's something that you don't see all the time, right? politicians show up and they leave right um and i know that a lot of our council members are back here and so they're listening right and you got something that we didn't get as a council for eight years while we were going to tallahassee we had state representatives locking their doors sneaking out the other side door not realizing that we were a big group and we caught them in the hallway i wish i had videos of that stuff hiding from us right not our politi local politicians here Politicians in North Florida that control, that sit on those committees, hiding from us because they know the damage is going on, but they don't want to accept it because of the other monetary issues that are going on in reference to who buys the product. Um, but uh, I truly appreciate what you guys are doing. Let me know the dates of Tallahassee. Uh, I'm happy to go if I can again. And um, whatever we need to do, if we need to push the town to make sure they fund that trip for you guys again, I'll be I'll be up here asking for that funding. Um, and do whatever I can. With, um, through the chair. Thank you, Nelson. Um, folks, this, this auditorium today should be 
full of people. There shouldn't be a chair in this place. There shouldn't. We have thousands of people on the west side that are affected. They should all be here. But we can't lead a horse to water if he doesn't want to drink it. Let me just tell you briefly, for some of you that don't know the story, if you go over to station, we have two fire, firefighters here. What's the fire station number right here? One, is that number six? 64, I knew it was a six in there, okay? If you go to that fire station, that fire station cost over $7 million and it's destroyed. I had the privilege of going into that fire station and seeing the, the place being destroyed. For the, those of you that don't know about concrete slabs, where those fire engines ride on is about 18 inches thick with special, special hydraulic um, devices. It's got all kinds of special things for it not to crack. We'll go over there and you'll see their whole entire um, floors are destroyed. Don't even think about their walls are destroyed. So it's not poor construction. It's definitely, it's definitely the, I'm going to say something. And I know we have a lot of attorneys here in the house. But I think this is my personal, personal belief. I think that we need to stop playing games with the minors. I know it's easier said than done. My neighbor said to me today, 20 something years and you guys keep taking meetings and meetings and playing around with the minors. Put your foot down and hire uh, a, a law firm, two law firms, co-counsel with, 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 a, uh, with two law firms and go after them and lay the hammer down and sue them. Sue them. Whether it be for your constitutional rights or whether it be for whatever violation. Enough is enough. Okay? When you show these monsters that you ain't playing around, that you got hundreds of people going after them, they're going to do something. But we got to stop playing games with them. And that's, and I know that we've got a lot of lawyers here in the house. But we need to stop playing games with them. And we need to show them that the citizens need to be respected. Thank you. Well, Hard to uh, follow that little um, diatribe. So let's continue. I'm Dr. Dave Bennett, 2.45 miles from the blast area. And that's where my house is located. Okay. Um, many of this stuff, the, first of all, thank you for taking up the cause. Obviously I was there a long time ago and uh, I got a little bit tired of it. And Miguel has more than adequately taken over for me and exceeded anything I could possibly have hoped to gain. But quickly, in case you don't remember, we used to control and regulate blasting in Dade County locally. Okay. So, you know, what happened in 2000, there was a class action suit that profited a few, but basically got the miners on, uh, on guard to change the laws and basically move the regulation up to Tallahassee. And the reason why you have deaf ears is because they can't hear blasting in Tallahassee from here. So, there's a constitutional law says home rule. Let's bring it back to Dade County where the people that can regulate it here will also be responsible and be held accountable by us in elections to make sure that they protect our homes. It's really not that complex. It's in the constitution. There has to be a way of bringing it back here to local regulation so that we that are affected will know and tell our elected officials, hey, this is what's happening, and we want you to do your job. Now, Tallahassee, obviously, they got a whole bunch of things on their plate, the least of which is our insurance crisis. Uh, obviously, there's been a lot of uh, talk about lawsuits having our homeowners insurance now pay for blasting damages. I'm not sure where that's going, um, but it's not the solution. Now, one last thing, in case you don't know, the study that they use to determine the PPV, which is arbitrary, I'm sorry to say, it's got no science in it, was based on substrata that was not what we have in Dade County. We have an aquifer, we have, we are under, we have water underneath us, which is incompressible. 
which means the wave is transmitted at the same intensity as it at the blast because water is incompressible. And it the study that I believe was was at Michigan, I can't remember, that's okay. But they were using different structure homes at a different strata based on granite. That's different. That has a resonance frequency and it can absorb the energy. It doesn't transmit it like water does. So the 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 law that they wrote that's based on incorrect and invalid data is in effect. And that's why they came up with an arbitrary PPV of five. It has nothing to do with reality because it did not do the study based on our strata. So gentlemen, I want to know your, your uh, task is before you. I thank you all. Um, I hope, uh, obviously, anytime you need some uh, assistance, I'm more going to come on by and help you out. But I think you guys got this well in hand. And thank you. Thank you, and and that I think that's important that we know that everyone knows that the, obviously we have meetings, and we prefer and love that people come by uh, to those meetings. Uh, one of the issues we have, though, with getting change here, and and our representative is here, and he's fighting for that, is that right now this is state control. So does every single representative and state senator in Miami Dade and Broward County can agree? That doesn't mean it's going to change. You need senators in Orlando and Tampa and Jacksonville and Tallahassee to also agree and vote for this. So that's why, like Brian said, it is a marathon of educating, not just you guys here, it's actually educating people, the rep state representatives and agencies in, in, in Tallahassee, uh, what's going on. So that's why we are doing everything we can to push that knowledge. Uh, but it, it, unfortunately, getting bills passed in Tallahassee is a process. It's, uh, it's not easy work. Good evening. My name is Lee Medina. I reside at 14431 Cedar Court, Miami Lakes. I'm very close here. I'm not that I'm sorry. I um I'm not that close to the blasting area. Um however, I have several damages in my house that people um, that I had hired to paint my home um, commented that don't even bother patching up or cosmetically fixing the problem because it could be related to the blasting in Miami Lakes. I have been hearing this for years um, for several issues. I have never found the time to address it. My pool cracked and it had to be rebuilt um, roughly nine years ago. And this is of course, you're in the Boston. I have resided in that house for 43 years. Um, my, my pool was, um, was addressed. We took care of it. Pretty much, we constructed a new pool. However, four, maybe five years ago, I noticed a huge crack coming from the pool to the kitchen area. I took a photo tonight. Um, it really scared me because it's a crack. It's, it's not even, um, I took a photo again, I, I could show you. It's, it really scares me um, because I don't know if my house going to sink or fall apart. And then I, I have known for years that some of the walls, exterior walls, were showing cracks that I had, again, cosmetically repaired. They will patch it up just to paint the house and always telling me that they were not addressing the problem. It letting me know that what they were doing was cosmetically so my house looked okay um, because they were gonna paint it. So they, they try to cover these cracks. Now all of these cracks are showing up again, even through the quote unquote cosmetic repair or cosmetic uh, addressing. They, they always told me they were not repairing anything. Um, my ceiling in my garage, it has so many cracks. 
um, I also, again, took photos. I have them in my cellular. I have them, I took them tonight. I didn't get them developed, so I can pass them to you. And um, I showed them to Miss Rano because, um, you know, it's not really related specifically to the damage to my home, but I like to um, make a parenthesis to say that I appreciate the job Miss Marlene Rano is doing for Miami Lakes, including involving herself in posting this important meetings like tonight. And uh, I want to thank her for that. And of course, I'd like to thank all of the council people at Miami Lakes uh, town. Uh, in the past, I had been very involved um, with the community because I'm very civic minded. My photo is in every single Miami Lakes directory. You could see I'm going far back. <laughs> when I talk about the Miami Lakes directors, my name and photo is, is everywhere. Um, I wasn't looking for photos. I was just very involved. I'm very civic minded. And age is catching up with me. And um, I don't seem to have the strength as I used to have. So uh, I don't participate as actively as I used to. But I still care for the town of Miami Lakes. I get involved and it's um, running of the town. I know the title could be the political positions. I don't quite like that word. I don't wanna misuse it. Um, so I'd rather say that I get involved in electing um, to govern my town and run my town and, and, and not only elect, but campaign on my own way for the men and women that are going to do the job. And, and I'm very happy and pleased. I think you are doing a good job, um, council members of the, my, my town of Miami Lakes. If you like to see photos, um, I, I, miss, I was going to say Manny Sid. I know Manny Sid since we used to call Manny Sid, yep. Sid the kid. I don't see him tonight. But, um, um, I have photos if you want to see them or if you think this is better that I get them printed. And if you can email the photos. Be oh, thank you. I will do that. Yes, sir. Um, so I thank you so much for your time. I just really wanted to address something that has been going on with my house for years that finally I came to address. And again, I thank Ms. Rano because I will... She's been to my house. Um, not that she's seen the damage, but um, she takes the time to involve me in things regarding Miami Lakes to make sure that I get the uh, communications and all of the, uh, about the meetings and, and everything that's going on with Miami Lakes. But I thank you so much, all of you. You are doing a very good job. Um, I love my town of Miami Lakes. I hate to say this, but I do miss the old days where all of the neighbors were involved because, see, we were the government. We are the people of Miami Lakes, the civic association. We were the government. And, um, of course, 20-some years ago, that changed. Um, we have to welcome change. And, um, and it's okay with what is going on. But it's not okay in regards to my neighbors because it's not right that they are not here tonight. And uh, they should, because you are right. There are many of them complaining about damage to their homes. But if they don't show the face, how is anyone going to know about it? But I cannot speak for the other people. I just. I just know that you are doing a good job because even though um, the, we don't seem to be as civic minded that we, as we were before or civically involved as we were before, that we should be working with the government and we are not, we're failing that. And you're still there fighting for us. And I thank you so much. Thank you, very much thank for, you for this time. Thank you very, very much for coming by.
be, before you you start, sure. um, what is the date of our what is the date of our uh, roundtable? Sure. January nineteenth. January nineteenth. Right. Yeah. One of the things that I wanted to convey to all of you is not only is this an, an informational session for all of you, and also an informational session for us to learn, you know, your comments, your feedback, and your questions, but also. Uh, we are also actively preparing for a roundtable sit down with the miners. We've extended invitations to most of the major mines uh, or all of the major mines uh, that affect Miami-Dade and I believe Broward County as well. Um, and so one of the things that I wanted to comment is if you have any ideas for questions or topics that should be brought up uh, at these at these meetings, feel free to let us know because we want to be your voice during that uh, roundtable. <clears throat> if I may, just to add to Brian's comment and uh, the wonderful lady that was up here, we thank our Councilwoman Ruano and our other councilmen. We thank our Representative Fabricio and the wonderful Blasting Advisory Board. And it's representative of the old days that we come together as neighbors. The mining companies, they are our neighbors. And as such, we have to coexist. We're not out to get anyone. We want to enjoy our neighborhood. Thank you. I guess it's pretty easy to say we got to coexist, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> when we are the ones paying the price here. But, right? First, my name is Deborah. I live in 8810 Northwest 178 Lane. My question to you, right? Because me giving you more pictures and more stuff is irrelevant at this point, right? We're trying to find a way to coexist with the minds. I saw your presentation and lucky for me, well, physics was my thing, right? So my question is, let's say we do go to Tallahassee and let's say we do hire an attorney and let's say that attorney finds a loophole because he has to find a loophole to play this game because we're working against big forces. Like he says, a lot of money involved here, especially when the state is picking up 80% of what's going on with the mine they are the ones doing here. Based on that presentation that you did, what would be a solution? Are they gonna mine in phases, not to have that big explosion? Are they going to, because you opened up saying, we can't close them. We don't wanna close them. We want them to respect our side as we wanna respect their side. But based on what you know, and obviously after the presentation, you know a lot, a whole lot more than me. <laughs> what would be, a solution. What can they do? What can they really do to help us? The, well, it, that's a multi-layer question with, and multi-layer answers. Mm -hmm. um, for starters, though, there are other mining operations that are existing in Dade County right now that are blasting below detectable limits. They cannot be spelled. You're better now? Yeah. Um, that They're blasting below detectable limits. So they are providing an asset to the community. They find that they, they provide jobs, the aggregate, the materials needed, all the above that's ever always mentioned. But on top of that, they're not bothering anybody. So the question becomes then, why do the other companies, why can't they follow suit? These companies are giving the other companies a bad name because they're all piled together. Um, so we need to start with providing, with, through science, right. it's irrefutable. So I don't care how much power, quote unquote, you have. Mm -hmm. You cannot contest science. So that is the, the reason why the, the crux of the presentation is based on the physics, which I'm glad you understood. Yes. Um, you didn't fall asleep in, in, in high school. No, physics. at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with that, we with through the proper science, then it can be properly regulated, which is what's needed. They cannot have carte blanche to do as they please and consider us collateral damage to their profits. That has to stop. And I quite frankly, none of us will tolerate it any longer. So we, we need to have an assist the state, which we'll get in the conclusion mm -hmm. of this presentation, 
will show where the community can, can submit their complaints. And the state is logging these complaints and creating statistical data of, of facts that there is a problem. Um, and, and that, again, that, that's, that's the next phase. Um, so this data collection is gonna be happening and then analysis of that data will be happening to then create proper uh, regulation for it. So th that, that will be the next level uh, that we're going for. Okay. Um, also, I heard you say that, you know, it takes time to pass these laws in Tallahassee. It really doesn't. It just depends what the governor wants, you know, because I've seen him, you know, pass his laws, this crazy laws that he's been passing lately for anything, but it's been prompted. It's been prompted by somebody who got up, complained, got in front of the cameras and said, Wow, oh, kids are getting CRT, whatever, whatever, ah, oh, law. Disney did whatever, whatever, law. So maybe it's time to put this in front of the cameras. Maybe it's time to start blasting. You know, I'm a realtor for 25 years. I can start sending letters, you know what, to all those people that are buying in that area, that realtors are not disclosing that that's happening that around that they're purchasing properties that are going to be cracking in a year and maybe a blast you blast a lot of people and you tell them let's start suing and things start getting noticed and deborah that's why we're here that's exactly why we're here the main issue and the main topic here is to get involved if the citizens do not get involved doesn't matter how many advisory boards are here. Doesn't matter how many council people are here. Doesn't matter if it's the governor or the president. That's right. If we don't get involved and we don't voice ourselves in front of the cameras, in front of our councilmen, and especially in Tallahassee, like we do every year, starting this year, we'll be there in force. We have our state representative here too. Nothing will get done. I agree. Involvement and... is the key. And you're saying exactly. But we need the people too. We have to fill these rooms. We need people to say, take a stand and, and determine enough is enough. Through the chair. And I do appreciate everything that you guys are doing. I really do. Thank you. Um, the rep, uh, oh, Ms. Deborah. Good evening, um, Miguel and uh, members of the board and fellow Miami Lakers and Northwest Miami-Dade uh, residents. Uh, my name is Tom Fabricio. I am this, one of the state representatives from Northwest Miami-Dade County. Um, and uh, I thank you for all you've done and, and to the members of the Miami Lakes uh, Town Council who are here, I, I uh, truly appreciate their work. So this year we have, I met with the town council, it must've been about two weeks ago, maybe a week and a half ago. And uh, we are in the process of putting together the, the Town of Miami Lakes uh, priorities uh, legislatively, which will include both appropriations and policy issues. So the policy issues that I've been working on over the last three years, well, two years, and now going into my third year, uh, the blasting bill has been number one. Uh, we filed my first year in the, in the legislature in 2021. We filed uh, precisely the bill that we talked about on the campaign trail and that I spoke with most of you I talked to Dr. Bennett at length about, and it was a, a bill that did two things because oh, one of the residents just asked, what are the solutions? And the bill, the solutions are two, I believe. Solution number one is lowering the, the ground vibration. And why I love physics, I love your presentation. I, I like to speak in simple terms. I want the ground to shake less. Less shaking of the ground, my house shakes less, all the better. So number one point is, is that, lowering the ground vibration. The number two, point number two was, repealing the legislation that, or the bill now, or the, the law now that uh, eliminates residents' ab ability to file a lawsuit against the minors uh, for property damage that they sustain as a result of that ground vibration. Um, so we filed that bill and we got a lot of pushback. Um, and, I, and, and, and Brian, I, I respect your position, but everybody in Tallahassee knows about blasting. Everybody in that building up and down knows about it because we talk about it. Not only do we talk about it, Miguel's emails and Edel's, is Edel here today? Yes, yeah, she's here. All right. Uh, Edel's emails. Hi, Edel. Hi. Her emails get to every single person in the Capitol. So we all know about it. Uh, unfortunately, what happens is 
that, uh, like you mentioned, um, you know, we are the tiny David against the big Goliath. And the big Goliath, it happens to be something that in, in part, and, and you mentioned it, we see as, as legitimate, the fact that the work that they do is somewhat legitimate. They're extracting a mineral, pro a product that's needed for construction and it affects the construction prices all over the place, but it's affecting our lives. Uh, as you guys know, um, I live about five houses away from Brian. So we live, um, but I think uh, Dr. Bennett mentioned, you said you're 2.1 miles away. I'm about a mile and a half closer than you are. Yeah. Uh, so I feel it every day. We feel it. We see it. We have the cracks in the house. I mean, it's a reality. And I do believe ardently that what we need to do is reduce that ground vibration so that the homes no longer shake. The biggest arguments that I hear opposing it is, well, a lot of you folks moved there after the miners had opened up the mine and after they had started uh, making, uh, you know, blasting away and taking out that uh, uh, the aggregate from the land. And, and they make they make comparisons. Uh, to pig farms uh, further north of state. Uh, there are certain areas where there are pig farms and there are residential communities that have been built right next to the pig farms. And then folks in the, those residential communities complain about the stench from the pig farms. And they say, how is this different from the big farms? I'm like, well, the difference is that our houses are cracking. Um, and so that's what we're dealing with. And you guys all know, because you guys have not only been there, we've spoken about it up there. We've spoken about it here. Miguel and I speak on the phone, maybe, definitely more than once a month. Uh, sometimes more than once a week. Um, so I passed that bill. Well, I filed the bill in 2021. Uh, it didn't move. Uh, then I spread it apart and I filed three bills in 2022. Um, and basically one is the reducing the ground vibration so that there, uh, that uh, the ground vibration is not felt more than uh, in areas where you're more than one mile uh, within uh, the actual location of the blasting. And then we separated out the litigation perspective the points the bill again uh, faced the same challenges. However, we worked with the CFO's office, and we, you know, we hemmed and hawed a heck of a lot. You guys did as well. Uh, you, you all visited the CFO's office. Uh, we had a telephonic uh, hearing with uh, the the CFO's office, where it, it, it must have been over a hundred people were on that uh, on that phone call. Do uh, you remember that, Miguel? And uh, following that phone call, the CFO began to enact. The bill that was passed in 2020, which was filed by Manny Diaz Jr. and Brian Avila, and that bill is the implementation of it is uh, that monitoring that you're seeing. Um, so they implemented uh, first they implemented the um, the recording of complaints through the uh, website portal, which is something that you mentioned. I think needs to be underscored because it's very important to be able to log the complaints. Uh, and then number two, uh, the money was finally uh, apportioned out there to and uh, the contracts were signed uh, for that. Uh, monitoring uh, with the size monitor, seismometers to be installed. So that's moving forward, uh, thankfully. Uh, I will be fi filing my bill again this year to lower the ground vibrations. I think it's critically important and I will need your help again. And like you mentioned, uh, like Rudy mentioned, we need uh, your, your presence in mass uh, to come up to Tallahassee and to shake hands um, and in a civilized manner. As you know, that's it's critically important that we do things in a very civilized uh, manner and present ourselves because when there's a lot of noise, the noise sometimes takes away from the message that you're trying to uh, bring across. And that message being that we here in Northwest Miami-Dade County are being affected by this blasting and we need legislation to lower that ground vibration level. Do you guys have any questions or anything I can um, anything I can address here? Um, Representative Fabricio, thank you for being um, here with us. Thank you for always supporting the cause. In addition to the bill reducing the the last the the PVC, I believe it's called. Is there anything else you anticipate proposing? One of the things that I uh, that I've, I've talked about uh, with the speaker's office, um, in addition to that bill, is. Uh, having the state enter into what's called an OPAGA study, where the state of Florida enters into an academic study into the legality of the background of what's going on and to the effects. And if we're able to get that OPAGA study going, and we're certainly going to be pushing at all, all angles to move it forward, um, there would be some public comment involved in that, uh, which I think would be quite valuable. FAU? The OPAGA study would is generally handled by analysts at in uh, the Florida legislature. Sure.
I think the the emails are good, um, but unfortunately, what happens with emails? I mean, I read them and I hear them, and I have other members and I speak to about them, and I know they're receiving them. But some we get a lots of emails. It's not only this issue. Uh, somebody else mentioned the fact we're dealing with issues all, all across the board. Um, one of the big issues that we're dealing with is the fallout from um, from Hurricane Ian, which you know it's been a you know, it's been a couple of weeks or a few months now, and we're starting to forget it because we don't see it every day. But that's a huge expense on the state that's been uh, that's been handled. Uh, Fort Myers Beach was effectively erased. Um, and so there's been a lot that's going on with that. There's been a lot that's been going on with the property insurance crisis here in the state of Florida, which has been massive. Um, and th that is an issue uh, that will affect homeowners uh, prices, uh, pricing of real, real estate property across the board. Um, so, you know, all these issues are being dealt with. We receive thousands of emails with regard to all these things. So sometimes the emails are kind of drowned out in some of the noise, especially when they are formulaic emails. Uh, when it's the same email over and over, people put filters in and they just, you know, I got it. I saw 100 emails on this issue. Uh, I think your presence in Tallahassee, you're coming up and meeting folks in a civilized manner um, uh, is very valuable. I think in, in, uh, uh, reaching out to the other uh, branches of government as well, the executive branch as well, would be valuable as well. I've reached out to all three branches. I sat with the governor. We spoke about spoken about this. I've sat down with Jimmy Patronus and we've spoken about this. I'll tell you that he is keenly aware, as Miguel knows, that uh, that this is an issue that's affecting us um, dramatically here in Northwest Miami-Dade County. So, but I would encourage more involvement. And other people who, other residents from other areas that are represented by other representatives should also uh, get engaged. Um, because while you are, you all support me and you guys come up and they all know that it's a Tom Fabricio issue that's being pushed forward. Uh, we want it to be not only the South Florida issue, we want it to be the Florida issue. And like Miguel mentioned, and, and all others have, we want to figure out a way that we can live amicably uh, with the industry because it does, uh, we do want lower construction prices. I mean, we do want that. I mean, uh, you know, when that go, when cost of construction goes up, the cost of everything goes up. And, you know, I'm sure you all know we're living in a horrible, uh, horrible, horrible inflation situation, which may become a recession and that, that could be problematic. So we need to figure out what's the balance. How could we balance this out? Uh, the issue with reducing the ground vibration, Miguel said it very well. Uh, I think it's something that can be achieved. Some of the other miners to the south are uh, able to operate their mines and extract a good amount of aggregate from those quarries um, with less complaints than we have here. So uh, I believe that interaction with the miners, civilized uh, civil interaction with them uh, would be valuable as well. Yeah. So thank you all so much for what you're doing. Thank you for the town council and the mayor. I, I had a meeting with uh, Mayor Manny Sid about, uh, when was it, about two weeks ago? Um, and it was just on blasting. Uh, mayor Sid and I sat in his office and we I asked him about what his ideas were with regard to blasting legislation and what we've done and what we what we can do. We spoke about it at length. So we're, we're working on several initiatives. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Uh, Representative Fabrizio, I have one more question. Sure. Again, thank you for all that you've done for us. You, you truly have been a fighter for the people of Miami Lakes and people of South Florida. Will you also be renewing your repealment of DOA this year? So, and to be clear, because words matter, I have never advocated repealing DOA. Yes, DOA is the yes, Department party. of Administrative Hearings. It's a massive agency that deals, it's an administrative court for the state of Florida, and it does a heck of a job. Uh, I have never advocated for repealing DOA. I've advocated for repealing the litigation ban, which uh, directs all litigation uh, on this issue to be complaints via DOA. And, and I, I appreciate you mentioning that uh, because one of the things that we were able to do is I had a meeting with the chief just chief judge at DOA, uh, who's recently uh, deceased, uh, Pete Antonacci, 
Uh, he was a great servant for the state of Florida. He served in many capacities under many administrations, and he was recently appointed to be uh, the chief judge at Doha by Governor Ron DeSantis. And um, he came down to Hialeah. He and I had breakfast at La Carreta, and we talked about this issue at length. And I said, look, one of, this is one of the problems that we're having. And at that point, right there at the table, he agreed. And then he issued a letter, which has been posted, and it became administrative law in Florida. Any DOA claim that is filed um, in Miami-Dade County with regard to any blasting issue, any hearings, any and all hearings or proceedings with regard to those issues are to be held in Miami-Dade County. So residents of Dade County don't have to travel to Tallahassee uh, to attend administrative hearings. Uh, so we have made, we have made, you know, while it's small progress, nevertheless, it is progress on that issue. Um, but uh, with regard to litigation, this year, uh, we're looking at a lot of the litigation issues. I was talking to one of the residents before this meeting started, and with regard to the homeowners insurance crisis that we're dealing with, in 2021, we had over 116,000 lawsuits filed in Dade County with regard to first party property insurance cases. Uh, that's a massive, massive, massive number. And that number represents more than 80% of the insurance litigation in the country. So in Florida, we have a lot of litigation right now. I don't, I don't believe that there's a climate to push more litigation at this point because of what we're seeing. Uh, but I think the most important issue is what can we do to make sure that your house doesn't shake? That's what we're doing and that's what we're working on. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you very much, sir. Good evening. My name is Angel Luis Vasquez. I live about a mile away from where the mining's happening in the Northwest area. I'd like to thank Mr. Tom Fabricio for being here. It shows a lot about how much you care about your constituents. I'd like to go ahead and thank all of you for your hard work. I heard Miguel during the, uh, the chair meeting just about a week ago or two weeks ago, talk about all the traction that you've gained since you started. You guys started, no one would listen to you. And now you're at the point where you're about to have a sit down with the miners or with some of the miners and see if we can bring more miners to go ahead and understand us. Aside from the fact that the traction that you've gained in Tallahassee, it means a lot to all of us. I do not live in Miami Lakes. I live just outside of Miami Lakes, but you are standing up for all of us. And that means a lot. I'd like to thank Councilwoman Ruano for putting this board together. And also the councilmen that were here earlier, and I'll name them, Councilman Collazo, Dieguez, Garcia, of course, Councilwoman Ruano, and Mr. Tom Fabricio, our state rep. It's a shame, I will tell you right now, it's a shame after all the work that you guys have done. I saw your meeting the other day during the chair meeting, and the only council person there was Councilwoman Ruano. You guys have gained so much traction, and it's a shame that the mayor or the vice mayor or Councilman Fernandez are not here to back you up. This should have been a huge meeting. You're absolutely right. By listening to all the traction that you've gained, this should have been an enormous meeting. There should not be one empty seat in this room. And I had to come because honestly, after listening to all the traction you've gained in Tallahassee, and thanks to... Mr. Tom Fabricio, I'm honored to stand here before you today. You guys have really worked hard, and I thank you for what you're doing. I have cracks in my home, and listen, we all do. All my neighbors do, and we all have to fix them every year because the holidays are coming, and you don't want people to see the cracks on the walls outside and whatnot. We all go through it. But honestly, thank you from the bottom of my heart and all my neighbors on the Northwest area that are not Miami Lakers. Thank you very much. Good evening, and uh, I too want to thank the board for everything that uh, you've all been doing. Uh, that presentation earlier tonight uh, was very impressive. You know, I mean, a lot of the stuff there was a little over my head, but I got the gist of it. And, uh, you know, it's definitely not just what, you know, the mining industry and the state law uh, say it is. There's a lot more uh, involved there. 
where I live, if well, you took down the, the last slide with the blue dots, but if you look at the Palmetto right before it curves eastbound, that last dot on the left, that's my house. And I've, you know, sent in my emails, sent the emails through, you know, your website, uh, been doing it for a while, and I get back, you know, the generic responses. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure a lot of us uh, have been going through that. Uh, as far as the presentation, just about all of the pictures that you had in there, they affect me. My pool deck looks exactly like that. <laughs> the cracks on the walls, you know, in my house look like that. The other thing I want to mention that you don't have in that presentation is the difference between a one-story and a two-story residence. Okay, my house is two stories. I can tell you without a doubt, the blasting affects way more second stories. It is much more violent on the second story. Sometimes, you know, if I'm upstairs and my wife is downstairs or, or vice versa, it'll be, oh, you know, I'll come down, running down. Hey, you feel that? Yeah, yeah, that wasn't too bad today. It wasn't too bad. I thought the second floor was going to fall. So, and I did do a little research on that and, a, you know, those vibrations climb up the walls and that's why it's a lot more violent on the second floor. But, Again, this as as was already been stated, you know, this is not a sprint. This is a, a marathon, and uh, nothing happens in Tallahassee overnight. It takes a while. There's a lot of politics involved. The one thing that cannot happen is to give up, because once you give up, that's it. You're done. Everybody needs to continue to fight. I am also somewhat disappointed in the turnout. You know, I am probably a little bit guilty of that as well. I haven't been involved in these kinds of things uh, recently as much as I used to be, but that is uh, going to change. Um, and just have to keep pushing. You have to keep pushing. I have to keep bringing up. I know that, you know, like I said, that presentation, the science that was presented there. You know, none of that was talked about when this first started. And uh, if we all just pitch in together, and if everybody in Northwest Miami-Dade and in Southwest Broward were just to just send in the emails, I think that this process would go a long way. All right. Thank you. Thank you, George. Through the chair. I think that um, that for January the 19th, we have a month from today. We should be able to pack this whole entire place, the parking lot, and not be able to have one person come into this place. And I will work. Janet, um, if you could help us, everybody, reach out to your neighbors, to your residents, who, whoever you could talk to, so we can fill this place to the rim. Thank you. My name uh before you get started, um, there's something I wanted to bring to Miguel's attention and possibly Deborah's, and she mentioned uh, that she knows a thing or two about physics, but I know that we don't have, at least in the studies that I've seen us uh, bring up, a study ver of single story versus two story, going to what he just said. Um, is there a chance that we can get something like that? Because I do think that that is a legitimate point of conversation to be brought up, possibly at the round table with the miners. That is not an issue that we've really brought up. And again, the, the part of the purpose of this meeting, aside from education, was for us to get issues to bring up. So I, I don't know if you have info on that or, or if Deborah could talk about why a second floor would get affected more than a, a, a single story. The distance that uh, vertically that you're traveling and the height, uh, it's not just second floor, but but a, but the if it's a taller structure, um, that distance makes the, the sway uh, much more greater. So that is why a second, a two story or a three story or the eight story buildings will feel it even more. Um, and yes, a study needs to happen. There's a there's a thing called the shake table and they, they actually physically build a model, a structural model of, of a building and place on the shake table. And that will give you the, the actual data of what you're talking about. And that needs to be done. It, ha it, it hasn't been done. Um, and I've actually been speaking with a gentleman that, that is a forensic engineer 
and does do this. So it's, I think it's something to, to engage him with to see what will it take to, to perform that test. Uh, my name's uh, Joey Formoso. I live in the much better neighborhood, PSN, uh, than Miami Lakes. Just messing with you guys. Uh, <clears throat> and, and of course, thank you. I, I mean, I've talked to you a couple of times about this stuff. You know, thank you for your work. Uh, thank you all you. But I, I got a couple of questions in a sense. We all know that this blasting is not going to work on concrete. We all know it doesn't take a genius, you know, like Miguel. Uh, you give me my money later. Uh, and, uh, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that vibrations are not going to work on concrete, you know. So why is it so hard for our politicians? I don't mean to point you out. Why? Why is it so hard for them not to pay attention to information, facts that you know, I had, believe it or not, I had White Rock send out their engineers and stuff to my house and they came and they tested my house. And of course, what I learned from them, and this is really the point that I want to just tell you guys, what I learned from them is that the laws that they have passed, that this crack that I have here. Well, if I can't prove that it happened in the last six months, that it, it has nothing to do with them. So they have enough power to pass a law, I guess, a law, a rule, whatever, that is ridiculous. You know, so they would say they would say that this crack, oh yeah, it just it just just happened. If I can't prove to them that it happened in the last six months, it doesn't you know, go against them, you know? And I mean, that's just, uh, yeah, the, the six months and just proving that they did it, you know, they came over and checked my foundation and I was like, they just blamed it on me. You know, they blamed it on all my stuff. So how, you know, I'm just throwing that out there just so you can keep that in mind because I know that your information is great, but if they're just going to say, pass these laws, it's not going to work out for us. The, uh, I could share with you the, 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 what, what Dr. David Bennett was mentioning, the study that he was referring to, it was done in shale. So actually in, in, in Pennsylvania. Uh, the recommendation under that study was the energy wave to be at 0.75. The state regulation is set at 0.5. So it was attractive to the state when they passed this law that they were actually below that limit of that, that um, federal study that was created. Never did they mention that that federal study is done on shale and not a strata of water. In reality, there is no study that has been done here. So that's being used to their advantage. So what's, what's engaging now with this um, I did pilot program is it's getting the data so that a study, proper study can be done. It hasn't been done before. So unfortunately it does take things way too long, it's way too slow, but it is the reality. And as, as my colleague saying, it, it's, a, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. So we gotta keep chipping away at this um, until we can find an equitable solution. Now, one thing I'm going to get into wrapping the, this meeting up is to show you guys how simple it is to file a complaint and where that data is going to. We need everybody's help to, to populate this website for the state because it is statistical data and it is being heard. I'm, I'm home a lot and I have it on my phone and it's I very know. easy. You press one button and you send it and it's very simple. It's just your name, your address, I mean, like three different things, and then you get a response back. That and, and even you can do it. So if, if you, Joey can do it, can anybody do can do it. We know. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you Joe. David, good evening. As you all know me, I'm Idelia Bore. How about you? Uh, I just want to say thank you to all of you uh, for making this possible. I believe that we can make it different if more people get involved. You guys have made a very, very much effort to do this meeting and where's the people? So in order to see a different, we need people involvement. It's not just because I do a lot. But you know that I'm. So I just want to say thank you to all of you. I'd, I'd like to um, recognize the Delavore. Um, 
I like to recognize Della Vore. She's been consistent in, in filing her complaints to every state legislator and, and state rep Fabricio can testify of that. There, the legislators have actually made folders of her emails. And when we visited, knocked on doors, cold called, they said, wait a second. Do you know this person? Is this a robot call? I said, no, that is the Del Lavore. That's a human. Well, thank you. If, if there were more people like you, would be less of us here. Thank you so much. And I don't, I don't want to give anybody my back. So first and foremost, I want to thank everyone that came out tonight. I know that we're in the holiday season. Everyone's getting ready for Noche Buena, and, and this might not have been the best uh, week to host this. But more importantly, I want to thank Representative Tom Fabrizio, because what you don't know is that Tallahassee is a difficult place. It is a, it is a very hostile environment, and it takes courage, and it takes commitment, and it takes love of your community to do what Representative Fabrizio is doing for us. And that is something that we cannot forget. So thank you so much, Tom. I know that you're part of the Miami Lakes family and you never, ever disappoint. So on behalf of the mayor, the town council, council member Garcia, that's in the back of the room as well. We thank you wholeheartedly for, for making Miami Lakes your own and for, and for loving us and taking care of us the way that you do. We truly appreciate all that you've done. Thank you to the board. The BAB, Blasting Advisory Board, um, is one of my babies, and uh, I love you tremendously. And sometimes, you know, all the, the planets come and they align themselves in the perfect way to form a group that really creates change. And what you guys have done is something that, as a council, we were unable to do. And we recognize that. You went to Tallahassee. You had numerous meetings. The representatives and the senators listened to your message you delivered it very, very well, and the residents are very, very grateful for that. So we truly appreciate all of your hard work. We are committed as a council. We are committed to fund each and every trip that you want to take to Tallahassee because we know the hard work that you are putting into it. So anytime that you want to go there, we will fully fund your trip. We know that it is money very well spent, and the community will also support that. So the message to the community. And I'll say it in English and I'll say it in Spanish. I don't know if we, don't, if we have individuals here that don't speak English. The message to the community is there is strength in numbers and we don't have enough numbers. So we've been doing this for several years since before I became a council member in 2017. This was my project. We created this blasting advisory board against all odds because no one wanted us to create it because there were other boards that existed and we didn't need so many boards and we didn't need so many people. And so we have been fighting to be recognized since the beginning. So to me, this is a very near and dear uh, board. And we just don't have the support of the community. We need more people to come out. It breaks my heart to hear testimony like Ms. Medina, who is an elderly resident in the town of Miami Lakes and has to consistently repair her home. This is a quality of life issue. This is something that is financial. We are in an economic crisis. We are approaching a recession. Our insurance rates are through the roof, inflation, is kicking us where it shouldn't. And on top of that, residents in this area have the added expense of repairing their homes constantly. It's repair after repair. So it's something that perhaps might be unique to us, but the state has to understand that it is unfair. We have a right to enjoy our properties. We have a right to enjoy the real estate that we have purchased and no one should be damaging it. No one has the right to create any kind of vibration or frequency or blast of any intensity that damages my property and causes a financial burden to my residents. That is unacceptable by any means. And we have been very civil and we have delivered our message in a very kind way, but the state needs to understand that this is unacceptable to us. And we're not even gonna get into quality of life issues for children that have autism, for veterans with PTSD. These are things that are truly, truly deteriorating the quality of life for all of us that live in this area. So the message, at least for me, for you to take home to your friends and family is that we need to come out this is a huge monster that we're fighting. And no matter how much Representative Fabrizio talks for us in Tallahassee and represents us well, and Representative Rizzo, who also did a lot for us as well, Senator Manny Diaz at the time, and our new Senator Brian Avila, they are an excellent team, but we need to support them. We need to give them the backing that they need to deliver this message. So is there anyone in the room that doesn't speak English? We all speak English? So then I don't have to repeat it in Spanish. Perfect. Beautiful. So the message is go home, tell your friends, tell your family. We're going to have another meeting in January. 
I don't want to see an empty seat. This has to be a full house so that we can take photographs and so that the news media can show how big of an issue this is. But thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Nikita. We love you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, before we go, if, if, if I may, I, I wanted to show, to, to wrap things up. Before we go, I wanted to wrap things up. I wanted to show you guys how simple it is to file the complaints. This is the data that we need the, the community to actually do. So if you look on the screen, if you look on, on the other the other shortcut I gave you. <laughs> on, on the flyer that, that you've been handed, on the, on the bottom of the, both pages, it's the same two links, you will find a link to file a complaint. If you feel a blast, so does your home. It's that simple. If your home feels it, it doesn't heal. It's compounded damage. So every strike it feels, it, it damages slightly and it will be compounded with the next next blow. So it's very simple. If you if you scan that the QR code or put the, the website address in, it'll take you to this page. And this is with the state. It's a few fields to fill in. And at the bottom where it says summary of complaint, be specific of what you felt. It's not a matter of this is the worst. My, my house is falling and, and you know, and, and X, Y, Z. This is you need to be specific. My, my, my window shattered, my shelf fell off the wall, whatever you felt specifically to you, um, and, and submit. Once, once you submit, it will be analyzed and it will be responded with a standard um, response that they're in compliance with the state law, and they are. That is only being an acknowledgement of your email. It's not a matter of, of putting you aside and putting you off. If you could please pick the other link. Now, if you look at this page, this is the actual log of the complaints. And if you scroll to the top, you could see we're at complaint. Well, my eyes are getting old and I can't see the number we're at, but I think it's 1500 something. Um, so that's 1,500, was it 60, 65? So says the younger guy. Um, that is how many complaints have been submitted since, this, since the website has been live, which is only this past year. That's not a long time. That's over a thousand complaints. That's a lot. So that shows statistics, and that is only our area. We've invited Doral, and now Doral has a new mayor, and we presented to her, and she's promising to engage as well. So we need to extend uh, and expand the movement that we're doing, and this is it. This is what we need the community's cooperation to, to help us with. Thank you. Broward as well. Yeah, it's just our area, though, of, of the mind and so on. And then action. So, so uh, I've been asked to just give a few closing remarks. And what I want to emphasize is, for many of us, our homes are the largest investment we will ever make in our lives. It's the largest single sum of money you will ever dish out. It makes sense to dedicate the amount of time that the town council and this BAB has dedicated what doesn't make sense is why this room was not full. It, it wasn't full not just because people are not interested. People are worried about this subject. The room isn't full because the word didn't get out enough or people didn't prioritize it enough. And that is a sad reality that we need to combat. In addition, we need uh, data. We need information. This has been talked about all night. We need the community to fill out these reports. Um, blasting is an issue that doesn't discriminate, frankly. It affects not just our homes, but it also affects businesses and schools, as we saw in the photos. One thing, Angelo brought it up a little while ago, businesses, corporate structures, uh, they're built differently than homes. They tend to have larger foundations. They are more able to withstand these impacts, and yet we still see corporate uh, or uh, commercial buildings exhibiting signs of blasting damages. So it's not just poor construction on your home. It's not just, oh, because your home is uh, built weaker that it, it, it's susceptible to, to blasting damages. No, this is affecting all of us. It also doesn't discriminate as to age. We've seen old homes up there. We've seen newer homes up there. 
uh, the photo that is on the on the paper that's been passed out or one of the photos on the paper that's been passed out is actually a photo from the community where I live in Satori. That house is less than two years old. So this is not a, a, an issue about the age of the homes either. One of the things I wanted to do to answer, I think it was a few people asked, what are we doing? And, you know, I love Miguel, but sometimes he gets too technical on, on, on the science. And that's not his fault. That's what he knows and what, what he does best. What I do well is put things into perspective, into terms that we understand. Um, although sometimes I also get carried away with the legalese of it. But I do want to touch on some of the reforms that we're pushing for. Among them are including some of the things that uh, Representative Fabricio brought up, including a reduction in the PPV limit, uh, which is bring down how hard my house vibrates, uh, and also a repeal of the current situation with DOA, which is that they have exclusive jurisdiction over any disputes over property damage arising from blasting. Um, that is things that he has addressed uh, in the past, continues to address. Some of the other points that we've uh, brought up as an advisory board as potential changes, either now or in the future, are changing to county back to county control, how it used to be, bring it back down to the local level. There's pros and cons to all of these, by the way. Um, there's also changing the measurement away from PPV, uh, that, what is it, inches per second? Uh, and change it to the Richter scale, which is what we use to measure earthquakes. As um, Miguel mentioned at the very beginning during his presentation, he kept showing you that, I think it was a red arrow, right? That showed the, the straight line. That's what they're measuring. They're not measuring the wave. So there's, there's a flaw in the way that things are measuring. We're pushing to change the way that it's being measured to a way that actually makes sense. Um, and in addition, uh, I believe it was this gentleman who, who brought it up that there's currently a six month, 180 day statute of limitations on bringing your claim. That is preposterous. As a lawyer, I do not understand how the state legislator later could have possibly passed a bill that imposed such a restrictive statute of limitations. And I don't know if they refer to it as a statute of limitations. They could just call it a condition precedent or something else. But the point is, if you don't bring your claim within six months, you're not you're, you're not going to be successful on your claim. Correct. It happened within six months. And then the other uh, if and, and Stephen can correct me if I'm wrong later, but I also believe that you have to prove that it arose from a single occurrence. A single blast caused your damage when we know a single pile drive did not bring down Surfside. It was the constant pile driving, which brought down Surfside, similar to here. It's the constant blasting that, that weakens our home. And I will, not on behalf of the BAB, but on behalf of myself, I will tell you the part that terrifies me. I do not think that blasting is going to, on its own, bring down my house. The part that terrifies me is the part about, what was it called, debonding? Where the concrete and the rebar are no longer working as a team. They're working as independent units and it's weakening our structures. I'm not worried about my house falling. I'm worried that my house was built to withstand a cat four and a cat five hurricane, but a cat two is going to come and tear my house down. That's what worries me. I'm going to end with a challenge to all of you. This room was not full enough. It's your job. It's our jobs, not as the BAB, but as fellow residents of, of, of the town of Miami Lakes and of Northwest Dade, but it's mainly all of your jobs. Go knock on your neighbor's door. Go knock on the people across the street's door. Make sure they know how to fill out these reports. Make sure they're doing it. It's the most important investment they'll make in their life. They should protect it. So that's my challenge to all of you. Go talk to your neighbors, get involved, and make the reports. I don't know if anyone else had anything for Just to secure what Brian is saying, everyone remember during COVID, the, you know, different variants had an A or a si like a six variant or an eight, but basically how many people a single person infects? Let's say there's 25 people here. If every single person speaks to somebody and somebody else will speak to somebody, and somebody else will speak to somebody. So it is important that you speak to your neighbor, speak to your friends, speak to everybody and, and let them know what's going on and let them know about January 19th, the meeting we have scheduled 
to try to get this place filled up. Thank you for coming. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Now we're concluding. <laughs> Happy holidays. Thank you.